finding the time complexity of recursive algorithms is not as straightforward as finding the space complexity of recursive algorithms which we have already understood in our previous chapter we are starting with this new chapter where we will learn how to write recurrence relations for recursive algorithms and then ultimately solve and analyze our recursive algorithms in order to find time complexity and sometimes in order to find the return value and the number of operations of recursive algorithms we will learn all of these concepts in this chapter so our focus of this chapter will be to analyze recursive algorithms properly and to learn to find the time complexity return value and the number of operations so in this lecture our focus will be on writing recurrence relations as we need to represent our recursive algorithms using recurrence relations to solve and analyze them so our first task in this journey is to learn to write recurrence relations first we will understand what are recurrence relations and then we will learn how to write recurrence relations for our recursive algorithms so let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics the first topic of this lecture is steps to analyze recursive algorithms we will first learn what are the steps involved in analyzing recursive algorithms and then we will proceed with writing the recurrence relation of an algorithm as mentioned writing the recurrence relation of recursive algorithm is important in order to analyze them so let's get started with the first topic steps to analyze recursive algorithms so here are the steps involved in analyzing recursive algorithms step number 1 is to write the recurrence relation of the algorithm we first need to write the recurrence relation of the recursive algorithm this means we need to convert our recursive algorithm to its equivalent recurrence relation after writing the recurrence relation we need to solve the recurrence relation and we can solve the recurrence relation using the one of the methods which we are available with we will learn those methods as we proceed in this chapter then the third step is to represent the recurrence relation using the asymptotic notation we then finally need to represent the result of the recurrence relation that we obtain using the asymptotic notation so these are the steps involved in analyzing recursive algorithms we can find the time complexity the return value even the space complexity and the number of operations easily by following these steps so now we know what are the steps involved in order to analyze our recursive algorithms let's move to the next topic where we will discuss how to write the recurrence relation of an algorithm remember this is step number 1 so step number 1 is writing the recurrence relation of an algorithm precisely the recursive algorithm before we write the recurrence relation of recursive algorithm let's first understand what is the meaning of a recurrence relation a recurrence relation is a mathematical expression that describes the overall cost of the problem in terms of the cost of solving the smaller sub problems now what does this definition mean a recurrence relation is a mathematical expression so recurrence relation is an expression which is a mathematical expression that describes the overall cost of the problem the cost can be time it can be return value it can be number of operations it can be space it can be anything so through recurrence relation we can describe the overall cost of the problem in hand in terms of the cost of solving the smaller sub problems so through recurrence relation we can describe the overall cost of the problem that we have in terms of the cost of solving the smaller sub problems through recurrence relations we can easily find the cost of solving the problem in hand so it's a mathematical tool that helps us in doing this job now let's learn how to write the recurrence relation for a simple algorithm as an example i am choosing the factorial algorithm this is the algorithm we are quite familiar with so i am choosing this algorithm to write our first recurrence relation 
this algorithm is fact of n and we know that this is the base case if n is equal to 1 this means we are solving the problem of fact of 1 then we need to return 1 otherwise we need to return n times fact of n minus 1 this is the recursive case and in the recursive case we need to return n times fact of n minus 1 from fact of n we are calling fact of n minus 1 now let us suppose that tn represents the time to solve fact of n let's say the cost that we are considering here is time we are interested in finding the time complexity of fact of n so i'm assuming here that tn represents the time to solve fact of n now let's relate this to the definition that we have a recurrence relation is a mathematical expression that describes the overall cost of the problem what is the problem that we have here we want to find factorial of n so this is the problem that we have in hand we want to find how much time this algorithm will take this means we want to find how much time it takes to solve fact of n we are representing this by t of n as t of n represents the time to solve fact of n so tn represents the overall cost in terms of time to solve fact of n so we have covered this part that is we described the overall cost of the problem by tn here cost is time i hope up to this point the concept is clear now what is the next thing that we need to do we need to represent this cost in terms of the cost of solving the smaller sub problems now we know tn represents the time to solve fact of n now we need to represent tn in terms of the cost of solving the smaller sub problems this is a sub problem we know this represents fact of 1 if n is equal to 1 then 1 will be returned so this if block represents one sub problem and this else block also represents a sub problem here we can observe from fact of n we are calling fact of n minus 1 so we are reducing the problem by one here so in comparison to fact of n this is a smaller problem therefore now we need to represent the if block and the else block in terms of t so indeed we will represent tn in terms of the cost of solving these smaller sub problems and that would complete the definition and eventually we would be able to get the recurrence relation which we want so now let's do this we know tn represents the time to solve fact of n and here we know this base case represents fact of 1 now we need to represent this base case in terms of t this will be t1 because t1 represents the time to solve fact of 1 we know tn represents the time to solve fact of n so in order to solve fact of 1 t1 is the time needed and what is t1 equal to t1 is equal to some constant because checking the condition and returning some value takes constant amount of time so clearly the time required to solve this problem is t1 and t1 is equal to some constant c i'm assuming some constant by this capital c i don't know the value of c but I'm assuming T1 is equal to some constant. So, to solve fact of 1, we need constant amount of time because checking the condition and returning some value takes constant amount of time. I hope this idea is clear. So, we have represented this smaller sub problem with the help of T. Now, what's the next step? we need to represent this else block by t as well so let's do this here we have n times fact of n minus 1 we have fact of n minus 1 here we already know tn represents the time to solve fact of n so 
in order to solve factor of n minus 1, what do you think? How much time it will take? It will take t of n minus 1 time. Because tn is the time required to solve factor of n, clearly tn minus 1 will be the time required to solve factor of n minus 1. But what about this multiplication operation? We are not only calling factor of n minus 1, we are multiplying it by some n. This multiplication will take constant time. So, t of n minus 1 will be the time required to solve factor of n minus 1. And we need to add some constant time to t of n minus 1 to represent the time required to complete this operation. And not only this, we are returning the entire result as well. And as mentioned, returning some value will also take some constant time. So we can say this statement will take t of n minus 1 plus constant time. So this is the time required to solve this else block or in other words this statement t of n minus 1 plus some constant capital C. It does not matter what letter I write here. This C represents the time required to perform this mathematical operation and to perform the return operation. We know these two operations will take constant amount of time. I am representing this time by C. And T of n minus 1 represents the time to solve fact of n minus 1. And I got this from this Tn. Because I know Tn represents the time to solve fact of n. So T of n minus 1 must be the time required to solve fact of n minus 1. And T of 1 represents the time to solve fact of 1. So now we have represented the cost of solving the smaller subproblems by t. So what will be the overall cost? We know tn depends on these two subproblems. So the recurrence relation will be tn equal to t of n minus 1 plus c if n is greater than 1. As we can observe in case of fact of n, if n is greater than 1, then only the else block will execute. If n is equal to 1, then the base case will execute. Or in other words, the if block will execute. So, t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus c if n is greater than 1. If n is equal to 1, then t of n will be constant. That is capital C. So, this is the recurrence relation which represents the overall cost in terms of time to solve fact of n. Now we can come to this definition once again. A recurrence relation is a mathematical expression. This is the mathematical expression we can observe that describes the overall cost of the problem. The overall cost is Tn in terms of the cost of solving the smaller subproblems. These are the subproblems. So, this is the recurrence relation so obtained. And recurrence relation can help us analyzing an algorithm. We learned three steps required to analyze a recursive algorithm. In order to analyze a recursive algorithm, we represent it using the recurrence relation. And then we solve the recurrence relation. In this case, we will solve this recurrence relation which will help us find the time required to solve this algorithm. And eventually, we will represent the result so obtained using the asymptotic notation. This will give us the time complexity of this algorithm. I hope this entire idea is clear. Why are we writing the recurrence relation of a recursive algorithm? Recurrence relation belongs to a recursive algorithm. Instead of analyzing the recursive algorithm directly, we can represent it using the recurrence relation like this. And solving this recurrence relation is comparatively much easier. This is the reason why we are writing the recurrence relation. So, with this, we are done with step number one writing the recurrence relation of an algorithm. We have completed step number one. 
in the next lecture we will learn how to solve the recurrence relation that we obtained in this lecture so with this we are done with this topic also writing the recurrence relation of an algorithm and this means we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one